Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this next webinar in the ATA Engineering webinar series, Engineering in Motion, Modeling of Moving Mechanisms in SimCenter 3D Motion. I am Scott Tebow from ATA Engineering, your host. Our speaker today will be Trey Roddinghouse from Siemens and our expert panelists will be answering your questions live during the webinar if you type them into the Q&A or chat panel and also uh, live aloud at the end of the presentation today is Chris Paulson, also from Siemens. Thank you for joining us. And as I mentioned before, today's session is being recorded and will be available uh, for any of you or your colleagues who would like to review the webinar again or who were unable to join us for today's session. Let me begin by explaining a little bit about ATA Engineering, who are our sponsor for today's webinar. Uh, we at ATA Engineering are an employee-owned small business with a full-time staff of around 180, pushing 200 now, actually. Need to update my slides. Uh, and we have a very high preponderance of experienced, degreed engineers, averaging 15 years of experience. We provide high-value engineering services that help solve our customers' most challenging engineering problems. We work predominantly in aerospace, defense, robotics and controls, and themed entertainment, but also in such diverse industries such as in indus industrial and mining equipment and consumer products. We provide these services from our nationwide offices. We our headquarters is in San Diego, California, but we also have offices in Los Angeles, the Bay Area, Denver, Albuquerque, Huntsville, Alabama, where I myself am located, and in the Washington DC area. The services we provide are predominantly in the areas of design, analysis, and test. And in fact, the ATA name stands for Advanced Test and Analysis. Right now today, of course, it just stands for ATA, but originally we were the Advanced Test and Analysis Division of SDRC, the original uh, creators of a lot of the finite element methods and other uh, analysis methods that are used industry-wide today. ATA Engineering is also a Siemens Platinum Level Value Added Reseller. And we provide uh, software at training and support for a wide range of Siemens products, including NX, NASTRAN, FEMAP, Star CCM Plus, SimCenter 3D, which we're talking about today, SimCenter 1D, which you'll also hear about uh, peripherally today, but also Team Center, Solid Edge, and other products. Uh, at ATA Engineering, we quite literally wrote the book on NASTRAN. Uh, we provide the NASTRAN training materials that Siemens uses worldwide for training users in NASTRAN. And we also, of course, provide training ourselves. We provide software integration, software implementation, and uh, our very popular hotline support for all of the products that we sell from Siemens. Today, we're going, going to be talking about SimCenter 3D Motion. Now, SimCenter 3D is a part of the overall, uh, I should say SimCenter 3D Motion is a part of the overall SimCenter 3D family of applications. This is where we are right now today, looking at SimCenter 3D Motion. But SimCenter 3D itself is a complete multidisciplinary analysis tool in the Siemens family that includes everything from structures, uh, statics and dynamics, durability, additive manufacturing, electromagnetics, advanced materials, thermal and flow, safety, motion, where we are today, and acoustics analysis, all in a single environment that is fully CAD integrated and solver agnostic. So you can use Siemens solvers or solvers from a variety of other sources, uh, all within the same analytical environment, the same user environment. Today, we're going to be talking about SimCenter 3D Motion, which is the SimCenter 3D solution for multi-body dynamics. It covers rigid body motion, but also flexible bodies, tire models, co-simulation and controls, interference checking, and many other needs in the area of 
moving parts. So on the multi-body dynamics workflow, you have SimCenter 3D motion, which is that complete and integrated simulation solution, but allows you to front load uh, this type of analysis because it is uh, essentially NX. So, uh, SimCenter 3D is based on NX technology. So the, uh, the modeling environment is NX. And there are many advantages that come from that that we'll be talking about shortly. But it gives you an accurate and efficient physics-based simulation and a process solution. So you can design, simulate, and optimize all within the same environment. So the first thing we're going to look at is CAD. Uh, and the SimCenter 3D uh, product and SimCenter 3D motion within it is fully CAD integrated. It is, uh, if you were to open SimCenter 3D, which we will shortly, you'll see it essentially looks like NX because underneath it really is. And because it has the power of NX underneath it, you can quickly convert any CAD assembly into a functional motion model. You can apply the constraints that are in your uh, CAD model and have them converted into motion joints, 3D contacts, et cetera. And at all times, everything stays associative with your design. You also have the ability to import CAD from virtually any source. It could be CATIA, Solid Edge, SolidWorks, JT, Parasolid, uh, or any of the uh, neutral file formats like STEP, IGIS, or whatever. And using the synchronous technology within NX, you are able to consume CAD from any source and be able to both use it and edit it in SimCenter 3D Motion. So you can modify any part, uh, even if you don't know how it was originally created. You can edit the geometry directly or on the fly, independent of the part feature history from which the part was, was created. And you can import dumb geometry from multiple sources and combine it into a single model. So here is an example of a complicated uh, landing gear assembly, and we're bringing in parts and able to use them using this uh, synchronous technology. So next we're going to look at the kinematics and dynamics that are used to predict a mechanism's performance. So on the kinematic side, obviously you can visualize the mechanisms of motion, which is valuable in and of itself, but you can also check for interference as the parts are moving and ensure that velocities and accelerations remain within the design limits. Now, velocities and accelerations are not loads, so we still need to calculate dynamics, which is going to allow us to determine the forces and moments that are being imposed on our parts as a result of the motion, not just the uh, the contacts from, uh, from the parts being in contact with one another, but also the, uh, the forces from the motion itself, the acceleration, et cetera, of the system. In addition, we can also simulate controls, mechatronic controls or hydraulic controls in the system as well. From this, we can show the stress and strain on flexible bodies. So you can visualize the stress concentrations, ensure that your components are not going to be suffering from fatigue failures, et cetera. And if necessary, uh, analyze those, uh, you know, the durability or fatigue performance of the parts using other components of SimCenter 3D. So next we're gonna look at component flexibility within SimCenter 3D Motion. So we can already predict the, uh, the static and dynamic effects, but now we're, we can also look at the deformation of components and the impact that that deformation is going to have on our motion and on the relevant forces on the parts. At all times, the finite element mesh remains associative with the CAD geometry. So if you change something in the CAD, you can have that carry through into your finite element mesh and, and look at the simulation uh, results from that change. Uh, as I mentioned before, SimCenter 3D itself and SimCenter 3D Motion are capable of using uh, 
a variety of finite element solvers. So you're not necessarily just using SimCenter Nastran, you could be using MSC Nastran, Abacus, LS Dyna, ANSYS, et cetera. There's also the potential to apply automation, customization, and optimization in a modeling process with SimCenter 3D. This is more of a conversation than we have uh, time for this afternoon, but suffice to say that you have the ability to make uh, customizations to your models by pulling in information, for example, from Excel tables or routines or scripts, but you can also use the design space exploration capabilities of SimCenter 3D or even of the full HEADS optimization package to employ SimCenter 3D motion for optimizing your mechatronic design. Lastly here, we're gonna look at mechatronics as tied to other systems, modeling in loop, uh, system in loop or simulation in loop, depending on who you talk to, and hardware in loop systems. So SimCenter 3D Motion offers the ability to create dynamic simulations of mechatronic systems. And that means we often need to tie them in to other systems to get an accurate model as things change. So systems are getting more and more complex and models don't stand on their own anymore. They need to tie into other systems. Typical applications for this are going to be in vehicle dynamics, powertrains, both electric vehicles and internal combustion engines, and in aerospace, as we'll see in some of our success cases. <clears throat> so SimCenter 3D motion uh, systems and controls allows for the integration of this best-in-class modeling that we've been talking about um, with other tools to create a robust design for complex nonlinear multi-physics systems, including control system sensors and actuators of different kinds. So here's an example of tying SimCenter 3D in with other packages. Uh, SimCenter AIMSIM is a 1D modeling tool that could model an, you know, an entire rocket engine assembly with all of its moving parts, uh, or let's say an, an, an entire aircraft with all of its electrical, mechatronic, and hydraulic systems, and tie it into a detailed model of one particular part of the system using SimCenter 3D motion. At the same time, it could be tied into some routines created in MathWorks, or even use a functional mockup interface to tie to some other software as well. So here's a few uh, customer cases, if you will, for SimCenter 3D Motion. This was some development of the Mars rover at uh, NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, they were facing tighter schedules and seeing increasing moving parts. The keys to success here were having a single software platform, in this case, NX, from design all the way through to manufacturing, a full digital assembly model for the entire uh, Mars Science Laboratory, and this multidiscipline simulation that we've been talking about here. So they were able to achieve faster results with less manual work, less rework, and more confidence in the results at the end. Orbital ATK has used uh, SimCenter 3D Motion for uh, modeling the moving parts of their launch pad structures to ensure an adequate clearance. Farisha has some very complicated uh, mechatronic systems in their seats, and they use SimCenter 3D Motion for all of their mechanism simulation. And the type of results that they were able to see we're reducing process time by 90%, and that's through automation. If there's anything you need to remember about SimCenter 3D and, Sim and Siemens SimCenter software in general, it's that it is built on a platform that encourages and enables automated workflows. So thanks to being able to automate the types of tasks that they do every day, they were able to reduce their process time by 90%. They, <clears throat> excuse me, they were uh, accurately calculated their mechanical behavior and they reduced the time to develop new seats by 75%. So this is a summary for SimCenter 3D Motion and now we're going to be launching into an actual live demonstration shortly, but it has a best in class solver that supports critical engineering decisions, increases productivity with all of the 
uh, automation and uh, process flow capabilities of, this, of the Siemens Sim Center family. It includes such things as standard tire and road formats, mechatronic systems, and flexible as well as rigid bodies. Importantly, it is fully CAD associative. So it is natively integrated into NX and can also consume CAD from any source and use it in SimCenter 3D. At this point, I'd like to turn the uh, presentation over to Trey Roddinghouse, who's going to fill us in uh, on a, a few details that were not in my presentation, and then give us a live demonstration of SimCenter 3D motion. Thank you, Scott. I'm gonna share my screen and let me know just when you could see it, please. We got it. Awesome. Well, hello everybody. My name is Trey Roddinghouse and I am with Siemens. And I just wanted to cover uh, a little feature of SimCenter 3D Motion that kind of sets us apart from our competition. And this feature is what's called Transmission Builder. And it's a vertical application that is built on top of SimCenter 3D which allows you to model gear, powertrains, anything from a gear set to a multiple, multiple planetary gear sets. Um, it uses the loads to predict wine, and it's a human readable way to model these complex drivetrains or gears. And another feature within this is using bearings. And it allows you to utilize your six by six stiffness and damping matrix to model accurate bearing models. And we even have a library of these damping models to accurately depict the bearings that you're using in any models. And it allows just a non-experienced user to um, build these models with much more ease and accuracy. So now with that, I'm going to go into the live demo for the day. And here I am using just a deployable model, which is a built on an aircraft carrier with two doors that are opening up. And on my screen right now is the just NX CAD is what it looks like. I can go in, go into my assembly navigator and change any part. But what I'm gonna be showing today is using SimCenter 3D motion. And I just need to move that, sorry. So if I can go into application here and I will open up motion. And here you can see my motion model and what the motion model is, it's motion bodies, which are tied to the CAD and any change to the CAD back in modeling will automatically update my motion body. These motion bodies are co combined with joints, which provide that associativity, as you can see. And these joints are driven by drivers, which can provide that motion on the model. And in this case, it's in this piston body right here. You can also do things with forces involving loads. So I have two force loads on the door, on the doors, which will simulate that arrow force of the wind as the doors are being displayed or displaced. Now with this model right here, I can easily solve this. All right, let me make my solution active. I'll solve this solution and it will solve very quickly. And then simulate the animation just so you can see what this mechanism does. Just opens up the doors and then they come back in. And now with that, I can go into any joint and in this X, Y result view, I can pull up a, let's see, let's do a relative force, a force magnitude. And I can plot that. And in real time with the animation, I can also see the, the force on that driver, which is causing the motion. And part of what we talked about in the presentation was adding flexible bodies. So what I'm going to do is just clone this solution so we can compare the results later. And now that I have a new solution, everything in my original solution driver stays how it was. And now what I wanna do is go back into home 
and add a automatic flex, which is a very easy way to make any body flexible. So what I'm gonna do is just select the motion body I wanna make flexible. It already reads in the geometry that that motion body is associated with. I can click this little lightning bolt for a automatic mesh size of this part and select whatever material from our material library. And in this case, I'm just gonna choose aluminum. Now all I have to do is just go into connections where it shows all of the joints that this motion body is associated with and select where on those on the motion body should that joint be connected. So I'm gonna go in and look at this first joint, which is this little ball right here and just select that. Now I'm gonna hit that J015 and see that this joint is right here and select where that is connected to the joint. And just doing this through all four of these joints. All right, and now all I have to do here is hit okay. And right now it is automatically making the meshed body without having to leave the SimCenter 3D Motion application. Oops, sorry. Okay, so now that display updated, you can see that this is a flexible body here. And one new feature um, added in SimCenter 3D 2022.1, which is our latest and greatest version, is the use to overlay plots and solve in the background. So what I'm gonna do here is go back to this arc joint and overlay the new force magnitude to the same plot. And right now they look the same, that's just because it's the same data. But as I resolve this model, which it's doing right now, you can see this new data coming in, which is the varying force as the body is flexible. And on my other screen, which I'm dragging over now is just the solving in the background. So you can see the time it's taking to move through steps and where it is at. And that feature also allows you while it's solving to be working on your part. Um, it's not really needed in this quick of a solve, but sometimes if you have a solve that is much longer, still allows you to go in instead of locking up your entire screen, which is what some center 3D used to do. So now that I have this, um, we talked earlier about that design, simulate, and then optimize. So I've designed this model, I've simulated it, but say I don't like the results I'm seeing in this flexible body. So what I'm now going to go do is go back into that modeling application. So it's applications to modeling, and I'm going to click on that geometry and see that, oh, it's the actuator crank. So open that in a new window. And as we talked about with that synchronous technology, all I have to do is go to the synchronous modeling, select move, and I'll click these three faces. And let's just reduce this. So say there, I wanna see how will this change affect my model? I'll just click okay. Now I can just close that. And you can now see that this is updated in real time. So it's now smaller and it's definitely more visible when I go back into motion. And I can see that the mesh is greater than the now CAD body. And instead of having to remesh this part or do a new um, auto flex, I can just go in, right click on my flexible body and say, update all automatic flex and click okay. And Trey, this is Chris. While that's running, we uh, we had a great question from the chat chat that I'll go ahead and jump in here and answer. Oh, thanks. Question was: Is the flexible body a Craig Bampton model? How is the mode range specified? Uh, how is damping specified? Uh, Trey, go ahead and clear out those uh, diagnostics. So uh, when we when we created the um, links from the joints to the to the geometry, that automatically set up. Uh, uh, the static modes that we would get through a Craig Bampton model. 
And if you could go ahead and open up the uh, that lower, if you go to uh, modes, so we get um, from the connections and the joints, we get our static mode content. From the frequency options, we get the fixed interface normal modes that go with the Craig Bampton mode set. So in this case, uh, we're asking for 10 modes in addition to the static modes we get from the joint. Uh, Trey, go ahead and cancel this so it doesn't solve again. And then when he highlights the flexible body there and uh, expands the flex mode details at the bottom of the navigator, you can see where we can um, enable or disable uh, certain uh, frequencies. And we can also specify its damping factor. Uh, you can specify a global damping on all the modes, or you can specify a unique damping value for each mode. Thank you for the question. Thanks, Chris. So now all I would have to do again is just solve this. And as this is solving, I can go in and edit whatever I need to. And in this case, I'm going to plot that same joint I did and we can see the difference in that relative force. As this will take a second to load. Yeah, while that's loading, uh, we got another question from the chat. Uh, is it possible to define my own mesh for flexible body analysis? Is it, or is it currently limited uh, to the auto mesh option? Absolutely not. Uh, the auto mesh option is simply the fastest way with the fewest button clicks to get a, um, what do you want to call it? A chunky solid that's easy to auto mesh with a tet mesh to get the mode shapes for the flexible body. It's, it's going to be the, again, flu, fewest button clicks, uh, fastest process. Uh, but uh, if, if uh, uh, we're, in, we're part of the SimCenter 3D environment, uh, you, can, you can mesh anything you can uh, dream of in the uh, pre-post environment. There is a Solution 103 Flex Body solution case that you can add, and it will automatically generate the OP2 files needed for a motion flex body. And now by changing the... Uh the width of that part, you can just see how the results have changed and the ease of um, remeshing as all the variables are already there and then just solving again. And with that, that's um, all I have to share today. And if there are any questions, anybody can speak up. Yeah, we, uh... We have another uh, question uh, for the flex body. Is there an option to specify how many modes to include in the reduction? Uh, exactly. So in the, um, if I understand the question, um, the, the, the degrees of freedom of the motion joints will automatically um, uh, determine what directions to include in the uh, uh, modal reduction. And I think of those as the, I think as of the mode shapes due to the connections as static modes. Um, it's an old term I use going back to my dad's days. And then in the uh, 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 flexible body option itself, there was an option to include uh, how many um, fixed interface normal modes to include above that. And then, and it's the same whether you're doing the automatic process or whether you're doing the manual process. So if we manually uh, create a finite element model, add, um, they're called uh, boundary fixed conditions where the joints are, uh, those degrees of freedom will go into the, uh, the mode count. And then on the uh, EIGLR card, <laughs> uh, you also specify, um, the number of fixed interface normal modes, you know, the modes outside the modes you would get to your connections. You can specify as many as, as you wish.
Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, we still have the forum open for additional questions. Um, Jonathan, you can either just mass mute every uh, everybody, or if somebody wants to ask a question aloud, you raise your hand and and uh, uh, Jonathan can unmute you so you can uh, so you can ask your question. I see there's a new question in here uh, for you, Chris, from Adele Perez. Is there an application to use the results to predict fatigue life or the number of cycles based on material properties? Absolutely. Uh, Trey, if you could um, pull up uh, SimCenter 3D real quick. And just take, take it over again, Trey, it's no, no worries. And if you um, if you can uh, uh, go into the pre post environment real quick, uh, you'll need to if you open up a standalone part. Yes, I'll go into. And go ahead and create a new feminine sim. So we yeah, go ahead and create a solution and say OK. And then, Trey, if you could right mouse button in the upper gray area of the toolbar, up in the ribbon toolbar, yeah. and turn know. on specialist durability. OK. Yep. So. Durability. Yeah, so uh, within the pre post environment, uh, there is a uh, specialist durability that allows you to uh, do fatigue life predictions based on the number of cycles and material properties. Uh, it's got a very rich, uh, it, it um, not only does material fatigue, it also does uh, weld and spot weld fatigue. And it's got, it comes with a library with um, uh, different allowables for different uh, weld specifications. Uh, there's, there's a very rich uh, capability for defining different material models, for, for defining different types of fatigue methods, um, uh, whether you're doing uh, 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 stress, uh, stress life or strain life, uh, the different types of corrections you'd wish to do. The loads can come from test, uh, they can come from emotion simulation, they can come from a static analysis you do on a component. And that's, uh, again, it's, it's part of the SimCenter 3D ecosystem of, of solvers you can access with tokens. And the actual toolbar is available in the pre-post environment. We still have time for additional questions if anyone has them, so lay them on us. It's not every day we have the opportunity to have both Trey and Chris here. And uh, we can, um, as you just saw with regard to the question of durability, we can stray a little bit outside the purview of just SimCenter 3D Motion and talk about some of the other applications that it connects to within SimCenter 3D. Yeah, we got a great question from, from Jeff. Um, how equivalent to Adam's uh, flex bodies are the motion, uh, 3D Motion flex bodies? Particularly, are there options for mass invariance? Um, uh, they're not equivalent. We're better. Kidding. No, uh, <laughs> we're uh, we're we're both using a it, 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 at the core. It's both a linear modal superposition technique. Uh, some key differences uh, are uh, Adams forces you to use the um, their uh, modal neutral file, which is a proprietary data structure format. We streamline the process for our flex bodies by using an OP2 file directly. Uh, this gives us advantages in, in post-processing. Uh, we can get dynamic stresses a lot faster, uh, things of that nature. And then if you uh, go into, Trey, if you can pull up the flex body dialog. And if you go to uh, mass properties, or sorry, mass invariance. So th this is the control of the mass invariance we give similar to uh, atoms. And we're controlling the mass, we're giving control over the 
mass invariants that um, uh, uh, don't vary, mass invariants, and then uh, additional capabilities if you go to the advanced tab, right? We can also use uh, uh, frequency filtering, which allows us to uh, apply a increasing or decreasing uh, damping over our uh, set of mode shapes. So if we wanna have higher damping at the higher frequency modes and lower damping at the lower frequency ones, then we also have a transient damping, uh, which allows us to apply a higher uh, damping over the start of the simulation so that while we're, if we wanna damp out some of those ugly transients that are occurring due to the fact that we're, you know, um, applying a 1G loading condition, basically, uh, we, we can uh, damp out those transients. Jeb, did you have any follow-up question for Chris or did that answer? Nope, he says that's good, thank you. Yeah. So we're, we still have a few minutes. We'll take, uh, uh, we have six more minutes that we can spend uh, on questions. If we don't have any, we'll end the, uh, the webinar a little bit earlier. But while we have Chris and Trey here, uh, we're happy to take any more questions that you may have. Reporting capabilities. Uh, could you elaborate uh, what you mean by reporting capabilities? Oh, ability to export simulation results. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Uh, yeah, there, there's a, a couple of different uh, uh, things we can do. Uh, one is obviously any animation can be um, uh, exported to an AVI. Uh, that's in the export to movie. Thanks, Trey. And then any um, uh, 2D display, you have the option of, of writing out to uh, Excel spreadsheet. So Trey, if you want to uh, bring up some joint results, anything will do. Apologize for my slow computer. <laughs> so by, in, by right clicking on the curve, we can uh, export. And this allows us to do, uh, there's some test data formats we support directly. Uh, you can do comma separated values and you can do this for for uh, any number of, of, of curves. Uh, the, the plots can also be uh, saved off to images. And then uh, for batch post-processing, we provide a, um, it's, a, it's, a it's called a COM executable. So think of it as a, I use the term DOS program. It's called the motion results reader. And the motion results reader allows you to automate post-processing of um, uh, uh, motion uh, results files. Uh, it's, a, it's like I said, standalone executable, not licensed. Uh, you can, through scripting, you can tell it to open up any number of results files, extract any uh, type of data you want to uh, Excel or, or MATLAB formats. And then you can, um, and it's really intended for um, batch processing lots of results. So we, we have all those capabilities. Um, and then, uh, the, 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 like I said, the plots can be um, converted to images that can be brought into PowerPoint, et cetera. Great question. There are other scripting capabilities within SimCenter 3D and uh, and within SimCenter 3D Motion as well, aren't there, Chris? 
Ah, Python integration, absolutely. <laughs> so we, we call it journaling. And through journaling, you can um, record macros. And then those, those macros, or the, the, you, through journaling, you can record a journal, sorry. And the, the language can be Python, it can be C Sharp, it can be C++, it can be uh, Visual Basic, uh, Visual Basic. And then um, based on a, a macro, you can convert it into, an, we, call it, we call this capability NX Open. Uh, any, any macro you can, you can go in and program and you can actually create a NX Open program that will um, uh, automate processes for you. Um, in, as, and we actually, um, uh, an, an NX Open program is basically a, um, it's an application that runs on top of SimCenter 3D. It looks like SimCenter 3D, but it allows you to uh, uh, automate processes or even extend the capabilities of the, um, uh, the, the applications within SimCenter 3D. Great question. We have time for one last question before wrapping things up. Uh, if anyone has anything to ask, now would be the time. Thank you, Jeff, for your questions. Really appreciate it. Uh, we are at the end of our time together here, uh, but thank you very much for joining us for uh, today's session. Um, let me just take over the, uh, the screen share here once again. So thank you for joining us for your Q&A. We really did appreciate your questions. If you have uh, any further interest in SimCenter 3D Motion or any other aspects of SimCenter 3D, and you'd like to know more, uh, you can contact me. Uh, I work at ATA's uh, Huntsville, Alabama office, but we do provide uh, software and services nationwide. Again, thank you so much for joining us today for this, uh, in the, this next in the series of ATA webinars. And we will uh, inform you when the next ones become available. And again, the recording should be available uh, within the next day or two, and you will receive an automated email uh, notifying you of its availability. Thank you very much for joining us.